This is Eddie Gray with Garnish Music Production. We've got a lot to cover in terms of saving CPU. Let's jump right in. I want you to go to Preferences and in the Display icon, go to the General tab. You're going to find something here called Show Icons and New Tracks Dialog and Show Animations. Turning this off is going to free up a significant amount of CPU. So go ahead and take care of that. Another thing I suggest is that you turn off all other programs when working in Logic. I know for me, I am certainly a culprit of working on other DAW based programs like Machine or Core Gadget and then dragging the information from here onto Logic. Well, what you don't know is that it wrecks havoc on your system, which is probably why you've noticed a bunch of crashes. And so my recommendation here is to no longer do that. If you have to open up a sample based program, handle your business and then exit out of that program, you'll notice a big shift in terms of stability for logic. Another thing you may want to look at, especially when dealing with latency, is you want to look at your I.O. buffer settings. So go to audio in the devices tab, this guy right here. If you've got a lot of plugins, you might want to go to a higher number. Okay, I always say high when mixing and low when recording. So play with these settings here in order to find that sweet spot where the sound is smooth and the playhead is also running in a very smooth way. Another thing you can do in terms of creating stability within Logic is working with the processing threads. So this has to do with the cores in your computer. How do you find out how many cores are in your computer? You go to Apple, About This Mac, System Report, and you can see the total number of cores here. In my case, I have four, so I would go back to my preferences and choose four. See how that helps with stability? And of course, if you're not digging that, you can always go to the default automatic. Let's do one more. This one is kind of an obvious one, but it's so obvious that sometimes we don't pay attention to it. If you go to your mixer and you look at a track like this that has what, about 19 tracks, got a couple plugins. It's very easy to start to abuse the digital power. For example, I can add a reverb here on this track. I can add another reverb here. I can add a similar reverb here. Well, instead of doing that, it's obvious that we should be using our bus and our sends. So for example, here I'm using bus four and here I'm also sharing bus four so that I don't over exhaust my CPU resources. What I would do if I were you from time to time, I'd go up here in the CPU meter where the LCD is, I double click it and I just see what's going on with my meter here. And I just kind of assess what the situation is. Just make sure it doesn't get to a point where the audio starts to become degraded. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.